Now one of my favourite mid-range mobiles of last year is Samsung's Galaxy A52s. So this here full on 2022 sequel, the Galaxy A53, has quite a lot to live up to. And I've got to say, after using it as my full-time smartphone for just over a week now, it's not quite hitting the same highs as its predecessor, but in many ways it is still a very solid mid-range mobile and strong competition to the likes of the OnePlus Nord 2 and other mid-rangers around the £400 price point. So here's my full Samsung Galaxy A53 review, and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now as far as the design goes, not much has really changed up at all compared with last year. This thing is rather wide and stocky to the point where I kind of struggle to fit it into my jeans pocket. If you're a fan of skinny jeans, you may find you get prodded in the pancreas quite a bit as well. Thankfully with my baggier jeans, no problems whatsoever, but as you can see, the Galaxy A53 is a tall bugger too, so even when I do get it in there, it tends to jut out a bit. Samsung is offering up black and white colour options if you're not too enamoured with the peach or this here blue effort, but to be fair, they're pretty subtle hues, and for me, that splash of colour is very welcome indeed. That back is once again constructed from plastic and thankfully it's got this lovely matte finish to it so it doesn't get all smudgy and disgusting even if you're regularly in the habit of snacking on deep fried meaty goodness. In fact the Galaxy A53 even passed the most hardcore challenge out there, the Greg's Sausage Roll Test. Those greasy smears were mostly masked from sight, just a quick spit and polish and this smartphone was looking pristine again. And good news if you're a bit of a butterfingers because the Galaxy A53 is tougher than a Weatherspoon's pork chop. That Gorilla Glass 5 screen is still scratch free a full week on even with plenty of punishment and even that plastic arse end and the edges are practically pristine after a fair few drops. I did fumble this thing a fair few times this past week, partly because it's an awkward size, shape and quite hefty, and partly yes because I do like a drink, so sue me. And so far the only scar on this Samsung Glow is a tiny teeny wee nick up in this top left corner, which to be fair is barely visible at all, otherwise you wouldn't even know that this thing had been dropped at all. And also you've got IP67 water and dust resistance here, a feature that is really ruddy tough to find in a mid-range smartphone. Now another thing that I really like about Samsung's mid-range mobiles is you basically get the same slick software experience packed in here as you do with the premium priced considerably more expensive S series handsets. You got the latest Android 12 on board the Galaxy A53 topped with One UI 4.1 so anyone who's used to Sammy's smartphones will be proper cosy. All of the usual Samsung apps and services are slapped on here so if you make use of them rather than Google's alternatives then great news. You also do unfortunately get some unnecessary extras like Facebook and TikTok chucked on. Now I won't spend lots of time in this video banging on about all the great features packed into One UI 4.1, all of the best new bits etc. If you want to know more about that go check out my in-depth dedicated video on One UI 4 and that'll explain a lot. However, it's definitely worth pointing out that Samsung security smarts are once again back in action here on the A53. You've got the Knox Security Suite version 3.8, so the same as what you'll find on those expensive S22 handsets. So it's good to know that your privates will stay private, and I've definitely got no complaints with that in-display optical fingerprint sensor either. It's reliable enough, only really struggling with proper moist mitts. The face recognition not quite so impressive, the A53 does occasionally take a couple of goals before it actually works out that I am me, but it's always there as a backup if you need it. And on the storage tip we've got 128 gigs stuffed inside of the A53, so pretty standard, fairly generous amount, although after one week of use I've used about half of that amount, partly because of Genshin bloody impact and partly because of the 23 gigs worth of system files. But yes, glory be, the A53 does support micro SD memory cards up to one terabyte in total, so expansion is easy enough. Now that display tech hasn't really changed up much at all from last year's models and that is more than fine by me as Samsung really knows how to spaff out a gorgeous smartphone screen. This 6.5 inch Super AMOLED once again pumps out finely detailed Full HD Plus resolution visuals with really poppy colours, wide viewing angles and only a teeny wee infinity or orifice poking out of that top end. It's another super smooth 120Hz effort but you have to manually switch from 60 to 120 if you want that fluid finish. The brightness tops off at around 800 nits and I had absolutely zero issues with visibility when I was outdoors even when it wasn't heavily overcast for a change. The Galaxy A53 stereo speaker setup is impressive too, packing more of a wallop on that top volume than ever before, but one of the drawbacks of grabbing this year's model is the lack of a headphone jack. Thankfully the Bluetooth streaming has been absolutely flawless all week long no matter which pair of headphones or speaker I was streaming to and you've got full Dolby Atmos support on here as well so overall the sound side of things gets a big thumbs up. 
Now, rather than opt in for a bit of Snapdragon action again, this phone is actually powered by Samsung's very own 5 nanometer Exynos 1280 chipset backed by 6 gigs of RAM. And unfortunately, this does feel like a bit of a downgrade in many ways. Even with everyday use, when you're just flicking through menus, opening up apps, etc., you will see a fair bit of judgment and pausing going on. It's not as bad as it was a week ago when I did my unboxing as an update does seem to have sort of sorted out some of the performance issues but overall it's still not as slick as some of its rivals like the Pixels. And the camera app in particular seems rather drowsy at times. Sometimes it can take a little while for that focus to finally fix onto your subject and especially when you're shooting in low light the processing times can be rather tedious. Likewise, if you're going to be gaming, it's best to keep it light with some Call of Duty or PUBG Mobile, which play perfectly on higher detail settings. Samsung's screen is spacious and sharp enough for a clear view of the action at all times, and it's responsive enough to give you a chance against the legions of filthy sniping school children. However, Genshin Impact and more demanding fare do prove much more of a challenge, even on the lowest detail settings, so I'd say they're probably best avoided, even though Sammy does offer a selection of gaming tools to help you out. Thankfully this past week I've had absolutely no issues with the 5G connectivity or the Wi-Fi connectivity either, the network inside has been absolutely fine. And one of the absolute highlights of the Galaxy A53 is that battery life with a bigger than ever 5000 mAh capacity cell squashed into that awesomely blue frame. Not once have I had to recharge this thing during the day and that's with plenty of punishment as well. I think on the heaviest day so far this week I used it as a sat nav for a couple of hours. I took a lot of photo and video samples with this thing. Overall I had the screen turned on for almost 7 hours. I was doing lots of Deezer and Audible streaming in the background as well and I still had dregs left when I staggered into bed at I think it was about midnight. And also that's with the always on display active, that's with the 120Hz screen mode turned on, all that good stuff, so I wasn't limiting it in any way at all. And when you do need to recharge, well, the Galaxy A53 supports 25 watt fast charging, although you don't get an adapter bundled in the box, you'll have to supply your own. And yes, 25 watt, pretty slow compared with a lot of mid-range rivals, which now offer the likes of 65 watt fast charging. In fact, Xiaomi on its Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus offers 120 watt fast charging which is kind of bonkers but hey ho no wireless charging support though here on the A53 which again is a feature that's pretty hard to find at this price. Now another area where the A53 mostly impressed me was that 64 megapixel primary shooter with built-in OIS. Given enough light you will get accurate colours, rich textures and crisp detail in all of your test shots. These things look good even when viewed back on a tele screen and even with pretty strong contrast it is rare to have a seriously saturated pick. And while the focus isn't the fastest around, as I mentioned before, I never found I had any fuzzy out of focus photos after a full week of testing. Move indoors or to more ambient light and the colours do take a bit of a hit but the A53 still captures impressively fine detail. Just make sure your subject isn't moving about as they'll probably end up looking like some sort of blurry David Lynchian nightmare. And in the evenings this blow does an alright job as well with a dedicated night mode to help out when needed. As usual, you've got a selection of bonus modes to play with, including an excellent portrait mode that once again allows you to tweak the bokeh strength after you've taken the shot. You've also got a food mode which boosts the colours massively and does indeed make your Greg sausage roll or whatever look more appetising if you want to reminisce about what you had for lunch. My own favourite, however, is definitely Samsung's single take mode, which once again is back in action here on the Galaxy A53. This is ideal for owners of cats or kids or whatever for whenever you can't decide whether to take photos or capture a bit of video of them in action. And the A53 also offers up a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle lens which does a reasonable job with colour reproduction and doesn't distort things too badly. Definitely a handy option when you need to fit a lot into frame. And then the rest of the camera setup is rounded off with a simple macro lens and a depth sensor as well. Video can be shot at up to 4K Ultra HD resolution at 30 frames per second or you can keep it at full HD at 30 or 60 FPS. This here is all 4K footage and once again I'm pretty happy with the results here. Outdoors you'll find yourself getting good looking clips with clear audio pickup all around the phone and while the quality of the images does drop when the lighting is in short supply it's still not bad. Last up, around front you've got a 32 meg selfie snapper and this works well in a range of conditions. A little too well actually because it clearly picks up all the wrinkles and sags and grey hairs when you knock off that annoying beautify bollocks. You've got a wide enough view to fit in a couple of fellow human beings with portrait mode smarts to really help you stand out. And the good news for any wannabe vloggers or what have you out there is you can actually shoot 4K Ultra HD video footage using that 32 meg selfie snapper and the vocal pickup is really strong 
as well. So there you have it, my lovelies. That's my full final thoughts on the Samsung Galaxy A53 after using it as my full-time phone for a week now. And I've got to say, while it doesn't quite hit those highs of last year's models, you don't get the headphone jack, unfortunately, the game and performance isn't quite as slick. It's still a very solid mid-range mobile. If you're not bothered about a jack and you're not going to be pushing your new smartphone with the latest memory guzzling Android titles, then you'll probably get on very well indeed with the A53, although the performance is still a bit iffy at times, including the likes of the long camera processing times. But anywho, that's what this ball git reckons. What do you guys think? Have you been using the A53 as well? It'd be great to hear your mini review down in the comments below. Please do pog subscribe and dig that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a bloody lovely rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.